Uh, I'm at Minor State. I work for Intel, but this has nothing to do with my day job. It's a fun project I'd like to show you. Uh, it's, it's basically a crash course on open source lighting technologies and DMX. Uh, this is like a pet project. I'm not an expert, so you might, oh, you might ask questions. I'll have no clue what to say. Uh, beer coding, basically. Uh, the people do know it's on the Sci-Fi channel on Freenode, so open lighting. Uh, I talk fast time. If I get too fast, let me know. Uh, and, bless, and basically, we just like monkey lights. Uh, so, DMX is just not a rapper. DMX just stands for digital multiplex. Pretty much any concert you've been to, any rave, or anything that actually has industrial lighting, has used DMX uh, in the last 30 years. Uh, it basically uses RS-45 for the data, for the actual data link. Uh, Usually XLR three or five connectors, basically microphone wires. Uh, just differential pair with the ground. It's pretty simple. And also has two unassigned pins, which people do weird stuff like run one ten volt uh, power over it, which is always a bad idea. <laughs> but people people find two wires they want to use for something the same. Uh, the, the, the the data traffic is basically. It's called DMX 512, so it's 512 slots of actual data with one command. So you have a command, and uh, each slot can be like just controlling a pan on a on a like a LED show or a laser, uh, or an LED string, which will show later. There's three slots for each LED RGB. So uh, each of these groups is for there's 512. It's called a universe. Uh, if you go to like uh, any like light show, there's probably thousands of universes at play. That's a lot of traffic and a lot of uh, equipment. Uh, most vendors stick to 44 frames a second. That's kind of a the max you can just, uh, put 512 plus one command bit out the RS45. I think it's 250 bits per second. Uh, like I said, commands can control the panning, uh, light intensity, and uh, slots can be combined to because well, one bytes kind of limited to 26 steps. If you want to have something panning, uh, 16 or 32 bits is much better, but you're taking up more slots on your uh, data. Uh, uh, there's, it's like, RS, uh, if you don't know much about RS-45, there is no clock line, so you have to signal start and stop. Uh, DMX, of course, all self has uh, a break of 100 microseconds low, all by uh, start bit effectively for the frame, and each of, each of the eight, eight bits of data has a, it's like two uh, one start bit, uh, eight uh, bits of data, and uh, two stop bits. Oh, and also it has to be terminated, uh, otherwise the bias network won't actually work. Another twenty ohm resistor. Uh, here's here's an example of what a frame would look like. So you have a break low of hundred uh, microseconds. Uh, 12 uh, microseconds to signal mark after break, and you see all the slots being uh, hit banged out. Uh, examples of, of actual lighting uh, DMX enabled devices, uh, stage lighting, lasers, uh, RGB strings like this, also RGB panels, which are just uh, done the same way three slots per LED. Uh, servo control, uh, lighting mounts, uh, dimmers, uh, fog machines, uh, and also kind of a niche market of like Halloween animatronics can actually, like uh, there's a skull one that can actually be controlled like voice commands uh, in, in, in line with like in a light show. Also some Christmas decorations if I remember correctly. Uh, here's an example of DMX in action. This is actually uh, wireless DMX. It's not using, it's using a probably a proprietary protocol, but you can use Wi-Fi, Zigbee. That's not typically used in professional settings, but if you're doing something like a Christmas light show, that'd be something that you want to think about. You have uh, everything spread all over your yard. Uh, now, oh, 
that's basically the introduction to DMX now. It's more a DMX over IP. Uh, it's, it's a little different than because you're not using cop you're not using really expensive copper microphone cables effectively. You're just using uh, basically your a regular network. Uh, it has it has uh, uh, pros and cons. Well, there's various implications of DMX over over, over IP that have been used. Uh, but some of the pros and cons, uh, ARPNET is kind of in, it's, it's used by a lot, but it's not really supported by the actual flash side, which is actually the, the writers of the DMX spec, uh, which stands for Professional Lighting Sound Association. Uh, and that one can support uh, 63,999 uh, universes. Now, that seems weird, but there's some reserved ones. That's why it's not 60 bits completely. Uh, the DMX original specification doesn't have any networking, but all the actual protocols that do networking stick to the 512 plus the command uh, buddy. It's simply used over Ethernet, but any networking protocol, I mean, any networking media can be used. Uh, there's also a concept of uh, so DMX was, just, uh, was created first, uh, and it's basically unidirectional. Uh, later on, they figured out oh, we want to have like light switches. Denver switches that but we didn't have DMX now, we can't just have another uh, run another patch cable because that's kind of inefficient. So they uh, basically kick, they just reserve one of the start codes. Uh, and basically, when that happens, legacy uh, equipment doesn't actually listen to it for the DMX, but it just sends data back in that, uh, in that frame. Now, open lighting architecture, uh, this is what we demo on this. Basically, an open source implementation over DMX over IP. Uh, it's completely open source. It has, it has DMX plus some uh, actual like Python C++ bindings that you can work with directly. The JSON, there's a JSON interface as well. Uh, it can be controlled by using open sound control, uh, which is another way to control uh, the DMX, like the DMX show. Uh, there's various plugins for interfacing devices. For example, this is a spot. These, these are spy. It's going to be driven by a PRU on the Google phone. Uh, there's very, very standard specific plugins uh, and also USB DMX devices. Uh, ironically, the only thing, one thing we don't support in open layer texture is actually doing DMX over for, uh, RS-485, surprisingly. Uh, we're working on a plugin for that. Uh, so you can use like a cheap uh, low-end development board, like sixty dollars, and basically uh, emulate something that would cost you maybe three hundred. Uh, RDM support works fine. I don't have anything I can actually test it with, but I'm pretty sure it works. Uh, here's what the web interface looks like for open uh, lane architecture. Basically, you can set up universes, which map out. This for this is an example of a LED panels. I, I didn't bring them because they're very delicate. But I have a video later on. Uh, basically you can map universes to different to different slots and different uh, since this is a spy device, you're mapping it to directly to this 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 uh, part of the bitstream you're banging out of the spy. And actually one's a latch. So it knows when to send everything out. Uh, here's a typical setup for open lighting architecture. Uh, you have your lighting sequencer. Basically, I like using pixel controller. Basically, makes pretty uh, visualizations. Uh, that converts it into uh, whatever uh, um, whatever DMX or IP spec you're using, which I usually use E131 since that's the supported one by the standards board. Uh, the open lighting architecture we receive it on here. And it would do the physical device, which would be a USB SPI or uh, RS-45. Uh, also, you can also use, uh, you can make a status code uh, trigger a relay, or basically in script, you turn a relay on and off, you can uh, turn off something, or you can have it run another script to like start this visualization. Uh, the Python and the Java loopback API allows you to send frames locally, which is actually going to be demoed because I don't 
It's going to be demoed. Actually, the frames are being generated on the board, and you'll see a LED string. Um, JSON interface I've never used, but basically you give a slot data, RTP data. Uh, just a little brief thing on open sound control. It's usually used for sound, obviously, but uh, it's, uh, a lot of MIDI stuff uses it. Uh, but as well, as well as lighting control, it's basically you have a visualization and you can control, like on my phone, I can control my LED panels, uh, what, what uh, visualization the, the sequencer is doing. Let's do outputting DMX. Uh, the brightness, the, this generation speed, is just another control mechanism uh, to a sequencer. Uh, for example, I use this touch, uh, touch open sound control on, on my iPhone, iPhone and there's various applications just for Android as well. Uh, here's a typical data flow of uh, DMX. Uh, you have your DMX for, uh, output, whether it's doing it over RS-485 or the net, any network, one of the network protocols, and to your end device. Uh, and it's basically putting a little other project I work on is SIGRAC, but I just want to show you what the typical data looks like for a lot of the uh, LED, uh, uh, LED panel. This is an LED panel, and it's basically self-clocking as well, so like 1.25 microseconds high, 1.5 microseconds low means low bit, and uh, 2.5 high means high bit, so uh, you can basically bit bang uh, out uh, an, LED, an LED string using the PRU deterministically. Uh, here's an example of what this, this, this is the chipset in this one. It's basically pure spy. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's the spy data and it's being uh, decoded and being decoded in, uh, to its uh, actual place. And it's being grouped into RGB uh, output. And here's an example of what you can drive. Uh, that's, that's, that's four uh, LED panels, uh, 16 by 16, so it's like 1,024 uh, uh, 1, uh, LEDs. Uh, there's a needle bone driving it uh, using the PRU outputs. Uh, it basically takes data from the uh, user space. It tells it which buffer to pull it from, and it bit banks deterministically out there, so no user space uh, lag. It's not, it's not too tight with bit banging. Uh, actually, I'll show you a demo here. Uh, this is going to be a PRU, it's only doing one output, there's five. <clears throat> and it's basically using the Python interface, it's not using pure DMX of the network because I just have here. So, and it's using a fake spy device, actually, a spy type device, just exposing it to user space. So I didn't have to write another plugin for open layer architecture. So, actually, we can do some bad on it, it's root. <laughs> so basically, that's frames being sent out. And if we go over to the web interface, you can see that the values are being changed on the, on the console. And we can also control it from the console here. Okay, I knew it was going to be a quick talk, but uh, conclusions, uh, DMX is pretty old. Uh, uh, it's really, really no reason to change it, uh, but there's other people that try, but really don't make anything better or easier. Uh, like open pixel controllers is the one. Uh, but overall, it's pretty much any questions.
So uh, you're using the PRU, which is a little microcontroller on the BeagleBone. Mm -hmm. or can you drive this with just a normal Arduino? Or yeah, with, okay. you could, but uh, uh, what, how you can transfer data deterministically at, at the same time. Okay. Yeah. So the PRU gives you that capability. Yeah, this the Arduino, you're, you're doing a little network. Uh, it's still going to be a lag. What kind of uh, tools do you have for like putting together your actual like output? That's uh, actually for for the big one. Yeah, I mean like like when you do your like like lighting program, you can generate the. Uh, actually, I have a project right here you can go to. Okay. It's basically carry firmware. You can throw it on there. Uh, there's some kernel. There's some kernel. There's a kernel shim basically to bring out a spy dev device. Um, and that's basically what's quite helpful. I mean, like on like a like a more like a higher level, like what you know, what do you use to like design the actual like oh, lighting effects that you like? Yeah, that's how you that's actually, like, you know, like that's actually this is the, this is actually the sequencer I'm okay. using. Yeah, cool. yeah, so it's a Java one. It works pretty well. Okay. It has it's pretty well supported. I don't know if it's still really being actively developed, but. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Like in the this one here. So this is the beginning of the string, so and actually it's GRD GRD values and not actual RGB values. Oh I see. Yeah, just the just the way what? Yeah, because this this is this is basically a, a it's like a it's like a console. Uh, the sequencer that was doing the, like the panels, yeah. that that's a different demo. That's oh, okay. that that's basically sending the DMX code to open white architecture, uh, open white architecture where it's C oh. Okay, yeah. But there's Python bindings. Oh. Okay. So somebody that's coming to this that hasn't played with any industrial lighting uh, equipment, like I, I see like analogs here. Mm -hmm. That like the software has been modeled on the physical equipment. Yeah. Like, yeah. How completely lost are you going to be coming into that without any knowledge of like the DMX and the SPI? Well, I didn't know much about DMX until like probably six months ago. I just got bored and just wrote this. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I have a layer issue. Of course, I don't do this for a living. So, obviously. So was the Python code? Sure. Yeah, so basically it's, I, just, I put it, it's just a sequence of uh, a type value, just a, a, a list, because it's three, three sequences, like the first, this first slot, Second slot, third slot, just a list of Python lists uh, at event, and basically tick interval. So it's doing it every 100 milliseconds, so every second of a second. And it's basically the sequence of just dropping one LED off to, to the end and starting again. Yeah. So you have questions?